just to repeat the welcome to you for attending the meeting today. In these days, there's a bit of a debate sometimes about whether shareholders' meetings should still be held. I happen to believe they're a vital part of a company's life and they're kept alive by the shareholders that do attend and participate in the meetings. So thank you for doing that. With more than 4,200 residents, 700 more than a year ago, growth was a key driver of Somerset's performance in 2016 and strengthens our position as New Zealand's fastest growing retirement village and aged care business. Somerset accomplished a number of milestones in 2016. We achieved 658 occupation rights sales, that's new sales and resales, which was a 14% increase on 2015. Our development margin hit 22.2%, up from 20% in 2015, and we exceeded our forecast build rate of 400 retirement units, an increase of over 100 homes on that number built in the previous year. We also recorded a $56.6 million underlying profit, up 40% on the same period last year, and a net profit after tax of $145 million, a 73% increase on 2015. The vision for our business is to provide the best of life to our customers, whether they're independent living residents, live in a service department, or live in one of our care centres receiving rest home or hospital level care. A gap for us has been offering secure dementia care. Last year we began to close this gap with the opening of our new purpose-built dementia centre at Somerset by the Rangers in Levin, a first for Somerset. We're particularly proud of this as it is a new area of care for us. It is the first secure dementia centre in New Zealand to offer people living with dementia the opportunity to have their own one-bedroom apartment in a licence-to-occupy model complete with kitchenette and living room. This gives them freedom and independence, something people living with dementia often no longer have, and allows them to have what is a true home for them with their belongings and personal effects, allowing them and their families to feel more like individuals living in their home as opposed to being institutionalised. We intend to extend our dementia service to all of our new villages. Our Casebrook village, currently commencing construction in Christchurch, will be the next to offer this type of dementia care. This is a real example of how we bring the best of life to our customers through what we do. We believe there are further advancements which can be made in dementia, both in terms of how those with the condition are looked after, how we diagnose them, and how we treat the condition and the attitudes and understanding about dementia within our broader society. We have a role to play in this, and to that end we have commenced sponsorship of the New Zealand Dementia Cooperative, which is a cooperative group which aims to bring together those with an interest in dementia to further collaborative discussion and research in this area. Caregiver wages have been a topical area for some time now, and our position has always been clear that wages for these people should be higher and government should fund the sector to achieve this in a sustainable manner. We're therefore very pleased to see that a settlement has been reached in the equal pay case regarding caregivers and that subject to ratification a substantial increase to caregiver wages will be seen over the next three years. This settlement is fully funded with government and those assessed as private payers under the means testing regime will fund the increased costs of this. For our caregivers, we're very pleased that this is now settled and they're worth recognised. And we recognise the efforts of the government, the unions and the New Zealand Aged Care Association in reaching this historic wage agreement. In addition to this, we've been working through a range of other non-wage related initiatives designed to improve the work experience for caregivers. These include a review of uniforms, which we'll see a new uniform trialled later this year, uniform allowances for items of the uniform which we do not provide, free meal allowances for overnight and long shifts, and improving our training systems for caregivers. We're still working on other initiatives in this area including an improved rostering system, and hope to have these implemented over the course of the year. 
Another area of focus for us is health and safety. We've implemented new systems to collect incident information with the ultimate aim of preventing and reducing harm to our employees, <coughs> residents and contractors. We will continue to expand and improve this over the next few years. This is carefully monitored through to board level and is improving the experience of life in our villages for all concerned. Our expansion in Auckland and Christchurch will be a huge focus for us over the next few years. In May last year we opened the village centre building at our Hobsonville village and in September we opened the village centre and care centre at our first Christchurch village in Wigram. Earthworks have begun at our Casebrook site, again in Christchurch, for a village that will offer over 170 townhouses and villas, 40 care beds and as I mentioned our second dementia care offering. Christchurch was previously a visible gap in our development portfolio. It's pleasing to be part of Christchurch as it rebuilds, helping to ease the significant pressure for quality homes. We expect our development plans in Auckland will also go some way to relieve the housing challenges in New Zealand's largest city. The first residents moved into their new homes at our Ellerslie village in Auckland in October. We are on track to complete the village centre and care centre in mid-2017. The village buildings will range from two to seven levels with a focus on creating an attractive environment which feels like a real home and community that people want to be part of. This attention to good urban design is essential in making larger villages work well for residents and for the surrounding communities. Our Auckland-based developments are currently being delivered in a construction market which is feeling a lot of strain. Our integrated development and construction model whereby we act as the main contractor on sites does insulate us from the cost pressures and delays which are being increasingly seen in the Auckland market. Also our ability to set our own sales prices for units protects us. However, we are not immune from these pressures completely. We have seen one to two month delays on some projects and we've also seen cost pressures coming through. Contractor availability is also an issue given the high workload in the market. Our Auckland developments continue to have good demand and development margins and we are on track for a retirement unit build of about 450 units this year. However, shareholders should be aware that these issues exist and that we are focused on addressing them as best we can. We continue to carry out planning for our two other Auckland sites in St John's and Parnell. We hope to be in a position to apply for resource consent for our St John's village this year and we are progressing the design for our Parnell village. <coughs> Plans for our Balcock village and Lower Heart are progressing more slowly than we would like. Last year a plan change by the council provided us with good design guidance and parameters. Our architects are reviewing plans for the village based on this change and continuing with the design process. We are committed to Somerset Bullcott being one of our best villages yet. We purchased two new sites for development last year. One is in Richmond, Nelson, and the other in the Hamilton suburb of Rotatuna. These purchases bring the total number of Somerset locations to 27 nationwide. <coughs> we have existing villages in Nelson and in Hamilton, and we found that there is strong demand for retirement living in those areas. We also continue to invest in our older villages, recently extending the recreation areas at Whanganui and Hastings, and starting construction on new recreation centres at Trentham and Levin. At the end of 2016, Somerset's total land bank represented approximately 2,609 retirement units and 366 care beds. This is a total of around six years supply based on our intended build program for retirement units this year of approximately 450 units. Looking forward, we have a clear runway of projects. It is our intention to add further sites in the main centres and in provincial locations where we will develop villages on our current model, evolving over time to meet the demands of the market. We face strong ongoing demand. In addition to what this might be described as Somerset's business as usual, 
we are contemplating how the core model might expand over time. This contemplation includes the possibility of expansion into Australia. This requires the careful and extended research and consideration which it is getting, and no decisions have been made in this respect, nor are they imminent. The second area of forward thinking is around the wider range of services which we could provide around retirement living and aged care. Again, decisions are neither made nor imminent, but we are undertaking work on the options, the demand and commercial viability of a wider range of services. We deliver results by providing our residents with an offering that meets or exceeds their expectations, ensuring that they are proud to live in a Somerset village. Of course, we couldn't deliver any of this <clears throat> without the fantastic work and commitment of our Somerset staff. They play an important role in the lives of our residents, from the caregivers and staff at the villages, to our employees who work on the design and construction of our homes, to the staff who encourage people to come visit one of our retirement villages to see for themselves how Somerset brings the best of life to its residents. This year as we celebrate our 20th anniversary and our 60th since listing, listing, Somerset is well placed to continue to deliver quality retirement living and the corresponding financial results which our residents, staff and investors all benefit from. Somerset has grown very quickly from its listing in our market, capital resources and people all enable continued growth. Some of this growth will be in new and expanded physical assets, while other parts will be in the development of a wider range of services. In the coming year, the Board will give a lot of attention to the best allocation of resources to achieve the best outcomes for the business and our residents. My thanks to a very dedicated Board for their thoughtful and active involvement in the direction of our business. We have a very skilled and hard-working Board who are always readily available and responsive to working with the executive team. Thank you, Rob, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. As Rob mentioned, 2016 was a big year for us in terms of growth, as we continued to focus on further expansion throughout New Zealand, reinforcing our position as one of the country's largest retirement village developers and operators. Somerset's simple philosophy of best of life respects the wonderful lives residents bring to Somerset villages. The annual resident and care satisfaction surveys are a key test of whether we are delivering on this. Focusing on what our residents want is the key to our continued growth. Each year we ask our residents how we're doing via our resident and care satisfaction surveys. This is just one way we measure our success and receive feedback on how we can improve our services. Our performance in 2016 was 94% satisfaction for people living independently as well as people, as well as residents living in our care facilities. Our care satisfaction results are the highest of all the nationwide operators and we are very proud of our staff and our clinical teams who have helped to achieve this. Of course, there is always room to do better and this will, as always, be something to fo we focus on in 2017. Both through our services in the villages and by t talking with residents during my regular village visits. Village visits are a vital and enjoyable part of my role. Making sure residents and staff know they can speak directly with me is important and something I will continue to do even as we continue to grow. Staying connected with residents, staff and village life is an essential part of my role and this openness, respect for our residents and focus on continually improving our services and village environments is what I believe makes Somerset the success it is. For many people, the social life and events at our thriving Somerset communities is a big factor in their decision to move to one of our villages. We now provide free drinks at the popular weekly happy hours. <laughs> Feel free to stop in, anyone, if uh, you're more than welcome to attend. Um, this is one of the ways we say thanks to our residents. We have int also introduced a nationwide exercise program at all of our villages called Use It or Lose It. This has been very popular with residents and is designed to provide a range of beneficial exercises in a fun and interactive pro environment. Although I must say more people go to the happy hour than the exercise program, but we're working on that. <laughs> Each village has an activities coordinator whose role is to ensure there is always something happening. This year we've had many great village events including It's in the Bag, uh, Masquerade Dances, Market Days, Concerts, 
residence weddings, uh, fashion parades, and even a onesie dance shuffle fundraiser which made it onto the TV news. We also launched our Somerset Facebook page in September, uh, meaning we can now share these exciting activities with a wider audience and encourage you again to, if you're on Facebook, to sign up. Uh, we have established a fantastic offering that sees us develop new villages efficiently and operate them well. But of course, we couldn't do this without our 1,000 staff who work in a number of diverse roles throughout the country from caring for our residents in the villages to designing and building our homes. Their exceptional work makes a real and positive difference to the lives of our residents, their families and the ongoing success of Somerset. Last year we launched a number of initiatives to recognise this wonderful contribution our staff make and position us as an employer of choice. The first of these was a share scheme that more than 80% of our people have signed up for. The scheme provides each staff member with $780 worth of shares that vest after three years if they are still in Somerset employment. Whilst there is a cost to shareholders from this scheme, we believe it is a worthwhile investment. In addition to this, and to recognise the hard work our caregivers do, and the important role they play in the lives of our residents, we implemented a number of initiatives and staff benefits in 2016, including an annual uniform allowance. Our caregivers, nurses and clinical staff who work overtime double or night shifts now also enjoy a meal from our kitchen, village kitchen or cafe during their shift. We have discussed the topic of caregiver wages at this meeting and more broadly for a long time. Uh, as Rob indicated, we are very pleased that a settlement has been reached in the long running pay equity case and that wages for caregivers and funding to match this will come into place shortly. I would personally like to thank the ETU Union, uh, the Nurses Union and in particular Christine Bartlett for pursuing this case with such persistence. I know this has not been no easy road, uh, but I know the benefits will be felt by a great many and well-deserving people. From a wider perspective, I hope also that this settlement goes further than just recognising the important work that carers do, but also attracts more people into this sector to work into the future and allows us as a country to lift the standard of care which we can provide for older people. Like many businesses, health and safety is a big focus for Somerset. We are making good progress towards improving our systems and culture with the ultimate aim of preventing and reducing harm to employees, residents, contractors and visitors to our villages. We now have two full-time health and safety managers and have implemented an online health and safety system to collect incident data and risk assessments. Our ultimate aim is to prevent and reduce harm to employees, residents and contractors. A particular, focus in reducing, a particular focus is reducing the number of hand cuts for construction staff and back strains for caregivers. We plan to continue this investment in staff over the next few years as their wellness is a priority for us. <coughs> Somerset also holds annual staff awards called the Applause Awards where staff nominate teammates who go above and beyond for our residents and colleagues. This is a celebration of the fantastic work and commitment our staff put in across the business. Also worthy of mention is our highly commended award in the Aged Care and Retirement Villages category of the annual Reader's Digest Trusted Brands Award. We are delighted with the comments from participants about our villages, including Somerset Villages are the nicest ones I've been to. Last month, Somerset's finance team won the Best Finance Team of the Year award at the 2017 CFO Awards. We were up against strong organisations such as Zero. Southern Cross in the Department of Inter Internal Affairs. So this award is an amazing recognition of the work we do. We are experiencing a period of demographic change in New Zealand. Our focus will remain on growing the business and refining and improving how we run our villages. For shareholders this should mean continued growth in earnings. You may be asking what our approach is to the ups and downs of property market cycles. In short, demand for our villages is driven by the increased number of older New Zealanders and the value we can offer them in that stage of life. The demand is not driven by the property market. Since opening our first village almost 20 years ago, Somerset has seen two property market downturns and during each, demand for our services remained constant. We adopt a prudent level to debt levels of all of our $283 million of debt as at the end of March relates to development projects 
We recently completed a $600 million syndicated loan facility refinance, an increase from the $450 million previously in place, which allows us to fund growth initiatives across both existing and future retirement villages. With significant excess headroom in our debt facilities, this provides us room for future growth and also protection in the event of any downturn. In Rob's chairman's address, he discussed pressures we are seeing in the Auckland construction market. Our model protects us to some extent from these pressures, but as he said, we are not immune. We have a good level of confidence in our Auckland projects and are seeing good customer demand for what will be quality villages. We continue to be on track for our targeted retirement unit delivery this year and our development margins are on track also. However, we have seen some delays on projects of around one to two months and we are seeing cost pressures. Looking at the pipeline of general construction activity in Auckland, we expect that the market pressures we are seeing are likely to continue for some years to come and we are mindful that we need to plan and execute carefully to be successful in such a market. Thank you to our investors who continue to support Somerset and provide us with the resources to be able to build new homes, to our residents who have chosen a Somerset Village as their home, and our staff who work to ensure our residents love the life they lead at Somerset. Thank you. Welcome to Somerset's 2017 annual meeting. I declare the meeting open. My name is Rob Campbell and I'm the Chairman of Somerset Group Holdings Board. I'd like to introduce you to the people who are here with me uh, on the stage. First, James Ogden. Uh, James has an extensive background in investment banking, including six years as country manager for Macquarie Bank and five years as a director of Credit Suisse First Boston. He has worked closely in the New Zealand dairy industry in high profile roles and holds directorships which include the Warehouse Group, Vista Group International, Alliance Group and James is also the chairman of Teagle Group Holdings Limited. Alongside of him our new board member Andrew Wong, Dr Wong, is a registered medical specialist with the New Zealand Medical Council. His specialist and postgraduate qualifications are in public health and he has held senior management and governance roles in the public and private sector in New Zealand and overseas for more than 20 years. He is currently the managing director of a private healthcare investment company and serves on the boards of businesses delivering a wide range of healthcare services, everything from private hospitals, radiology providers to cancer care centres. Alongside of him, Dr Marie Bismarck is duly trained as a lawyer and doctor and divides her time between Australia and New Zealand. She's an associate professor at the University of Melbourne and is a consultant with the legal firm Buttle Finlay in Wellington on the health law team. Marie has worked in the health sector for many years and her areas of expertise include patient safety and health care complaints resolution. Alongside of Marie is Anne Irwin. Anne is a professional director with experience in a diverse range of sectors including construction, health, infrastructure, financial services and telecommunications. She is currently Chair of the National Commercial Construction Company, Naylor Love Enterprises Limited, and Deputy Chair of the Southern Response Earthquake Services Limited. She is a Director of Steel and Tube Holdings Limited, Chorus Limited, and the ANZ Bank subsidiary One Path Life New Zealand Limited. Alongside of Anne is Gronje Trout. Gronje has many years' experience in senior executive roles with Coopers and Lybrand, which is now PwC, McDonald's Restaurants New Zealand, HR Consultancy Right Management, and most recently as General Manager Corporate Services at Sky City Entertainment Group. She has a vast knowledge of operating customer-focused businesses in highly competitive sectors and in board and charitable trust governance roles in New Zealand. Gronier is also a Director of Tourism Holdings Limited and has also just been appointed uh, to the Board of Evolve Education. Alongside of uh, Gronje, Julian Cook is the CEO of Somerset. He's been in this role for just over three years. Julian joined Somerset in 2010 as Chief Financial Officer and oversaw Somerset's listing on the New Zealand Stock Exchange and later the Australian Securities Exchange. 
Julian is a member of the Retirement Villages Association Executive Committee, a member of the Advisory Panel for the Masters of Ageing at Melbourne University and a Fellow of CPA Australia. Prior to joining Somerset, Julian spent 11 years in the investment sector, which included a significant amount of work with retirement village and aged care companies. I now want to make a small departure from our normal meeting structure. <clears throat> Everything which is done in Somerset depends on teamwork from care to facility management to development and sales. The senior executive team works very much as a team. So does your board. So I've asked each of our board committee chairs to make some brief comments about the issues they are dealing with to illustrate this. James chairs the audit committee and chairs the nomination and remuneration committee and got a new job at our board meeting this morning chairing a new committee uh, on construction. And Marie chairs the clinical governance committee. James, I invite you up first. Uh, thanks, Rob. As chair of the audit committee, my role is made relatively straightforward by working with the number one finance team in New Zealand. Now, some of you may think that's rather a boastful statement, but as uh, Julian has already said, last month the Somerset finance team was judged to be the number one finance team of the year at the 2017 CFO Awards. So you can see both the CEO and the board are very, very delighted that the hard work that we see has been recognised by the wider community. A lot of credit goes to Scott. Scott's down here in the front row. Scott is our CFO and GM Corporate Services. But also Leanne, Leanne in the back over there, our um, Deputy CFO and Company Secretary. The accounting issues paper that Leanne provides to each audit committee is best practice. And the other companies I'm a director of hear me constantly say, this is the way Somerset does it. Also a call out to Julian, who was Somerset's CFO before the appointment of Scott, who built the processes and set the standards. Two years ago, as part of um, EY's structured partner rotation and following best practice, Stuart Much took over from Grant Taylor as the audit partner. The Somerset Finance team and the audit committee have a very professional relationship with Stuart and his EY audit team. I meet with Stuart and Sam, the EY audit manager for Somerset, before the start of the half year review and the annual audit and before each audit committee. And we have a very frank exchange of views on uh, how the company is performing and any worry areas that either party may have. The other main development in the last six months was the appointment of KPMG as the internal auditor. This was after a robust request for proposals um, process. Management and the Audit Committee had decided that Somerset was now of a size and complexity where an internal audit role was required, with particular emphasis on the value add that the successful party could make to Somerset. So I'm a relaxed audit chair, but not a complacent one. And it's a pleasure working with such great teams of accounting professionals and having a great audit committee team with me. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Ann Irwin, and as Rob mentioned, I chair the Nominations and Remuneration Committee. And we do work as a team, and the members of that committee are Marie Bismarck, James Ogden, um, who's very relaxed, as you said, and Gronje Trapp. Uh, the committee's key responsibilities relate firstly to the board itself, recommending potential directors to you, with those directors being of a calibre to ensure that you, as shareholders, are served by a board of directors with diverse and relevant skills. And I believe that you see here today, before you, a group of directors with skills and experience covering the range of matters particularly relevant to Somerset's short and long-term success. 
got health and hospital management and governance, hospitality and customer focused operations, property matters including development and construction, and human resources and health and safety. The committee also administers the process by which the board evaluates its own performance. We have a good hard look at ourselves. We use external facilitators to assist us with that process and keep us honest to that process as well. And we also undertake a review of the performance of all the individual directors and the chairman. The committee's other key responsibility area is remuneration. And that involves the committee establishing the key principles by which the remuneration of Somerset's chief executive and the executive team is set. So that includes the various components of remuneration packages, the base salary, the short-term incentives, and the long-term remuneration incentives. Because those incentives mean that a proportion of the CEO's and the executive's remuneration is at risk. Their ability to earn that part of the remuneration is dependent both on their personal performance in their respective roles, but also Somerset's performance as measured against a set of performance metrics. The committee does receive appropriate external advice on remuneration, on benchmarking and trends, and we certainly strive to ensure that the performance metrics whose achievement determines whether or not the CEO and the executive team receive all of that short or long-term incentive component of their remuneration or what proportion of it they receive, that we're ensuring that those performance metrics are aligned with the interests of Somerset shareholders and they reflect the drivers of the company's short and long-term sustainable value. And the other thing the committee does in the area of remuneration is that we oversee the disclosure of remuneration in the annual report before you today. And you'll note that we have included more detail than in previous years, including the details of the incentive arrangements and the CEO's remuneration. So I hope you found that, that level of disclosure interesting this year. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here and lovely to see some familiar faces. Thank you all for giving your time to be with us this afternoon. My name is Dr Marie Bismarck and I chair the Clinical Governance Committee. I'm really delighted to be welcoming Dr Andrew Wong as our newest committee member here today. As a committee, our work is focused on five dimensions of the care that Somerset provides. We want to make sure that the care that each of our residents receives is safe, <coughs> timely, effective, efficient and patient-centred. And I'll talk a little bit about how our committee serves to achieve each of those goals in turn. The first goal of the committee is to make sure that the care we provide is safe. It's a cornerstone of the Hippocratic Oath that as health providers we should do no harm. And it's incredibly important that the people who trust us to provide care to them are not inadvertently harmed by that care we provide. A core part of providing safe care starts with having a skilled workforce. I'd like to honour the work done by our nurses and caregivers every day and to echo the recognition of the incredible work that Christine Bartlett and the Air 2 Union have achieved in achieving pay equity for caregivers. Second key element of providing safe care is knowing how we're doing. So at each clinical governance committee, we receive feedback from each of our villages around the country about concerns such as resident falls and medication safety. And it's not just enough for us to know that we're doing well within our organisation, we want to know how our care compares with other aged care providers. So we also benchmark our services against the safety of care provided by other aged care providers in New Zealand. Our second goal is to make sure that the care is provided in a timely way. This involves, for example, making sure that call bells are answered in a timely manner. It means making sure that if a resident's needs change, that they're re-evaluated in a timely way so that we can adjust the services we're providing to meet their needs as those needs change over time. And another dimension of providing timely care 
is trying to provide preventive care to help keep our residents fit and well and active. And as Rob mentioned, we're really proud to have a nationwide exercise program that our residents can participate in. The third element of high quality care is making sure that our care is effective. We have a suite of policies and procedures that we share around each of our villages to make sure that we're providing best practice care and we regularly undergo accreditation processes. We're incredibly proud that nine of our villages have been accredited for three years and five villages have been accredited for four years, the maximum possible. The fourth dimension is to make sure our care is efficient, that we're not wasting time or energy or good ideas. We've been reviewing our caregiver rosters and we regularly look to make sure that we have the right people in the right place at the right time. And finally, and most importantly, we want to make sure the care we provide is patient-centred. That everything that Somerset does is respectful and responsive to the needs and values of each of our residents. As Rob mentioned, we're very proud of our new offering of dementia care, allowing people with dementia to live in their own one-bedroom apartment. Um, the board's looking forward to visiting that dementia facility this afternoon. And we're incredibly proud of the high satisfaction ratings that our villagers receive, but we know that we can always do better. As a committee, we receive feedback from friends and family meetings. We travel around the country visiting villages to meet with <coughs> caregivers, nurses, residents and families. Um, and I look forward to hearing from anyone here today with ideas about how we could continue to improve that service offering. I'd like to finish by offering my warm thanks to all of our clinical staff from Gina Langlands and her team in our head office in Wellington, to our long-serving and highly valued caregivers, through to our newest nursing graduates. You helped to make Somerset who we are. Thank you.